Welcome to Coming to Life, a one-year journey through God's Word. My name is Katie Hawk. I believe that if you want to understand the Bible, then you must understand the book of Genesis. It is the very foundation of our faith because everything starts here. Creation, sin, God's plan of redemption, marriage, family, and government all starts in Genesis. So here's some great information to help you understand this book. Genesis is 50 chapters, 1,533 verses, and depending on the version, 38,267 words. It was originally written in Hebrew. The Hebrew title is Bereshit, which means in the beginning. It was very common to find titles named after the first few words of a book, so you will see this again. Around 250 BC, it was translated into Greek, and the Greek translators gave it the name Genesis, which means history, origin, or genealogy. This book was written by Moses, who was a great prophet. He actually wrote the first five books of the Bible, known as the books of the law or the Torah. He wrote it for the people of Israel, who he led out of slavery and into the land of their fathers. This book was important because it shared not only their history, but also the promises God made with their descendants. We do not know the exact date this book was written, and it's quite controversial among scholars. Most date the Exodus, which is when Moses leads the people out of slavery in Egypt, at either 1445 BC or 1290 BC, based on different pieces of evidence in scripture. And this book was written shortly after it, so it was sometime in that range. Moses lived approximately 1,200 to 1,600 years before Jesus. Many of the events happened before Moses was born, so you might be wondering how he knew the stories. Moses had a very personal relationship with God. We know that he spoke to him face to face, and he was considered a friend of God's. We also know that the Bible is inspired, which means the words written down are God's direct words divinely given by God to a human author. The entire Bible covers about 4,100 years, and more than half of that is in this first book, 2,285 years to be exact. The book of Genesis can be divided into two sections, the first 11 chapters and the last 39. In the first 11 chapters, we have some major events. It covers about 2,000 years. It starts with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This single verse is the foundation of Christian faith. If you believe that God was there in the beginning and that he created everything, then believing the rest of the Bible will be easy. So God created the heavens and the earth and then filled it with all kinds of living creatures. He created man and woman in his image to care for the land and rule over the animals. Genesis 1.31 says God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Creation was perfect. He gave man free will so that they weren't forced to love him but had the choice. Adam and Eve, the first humans created in God's image, disobeyed the one and only command God gave them, and they ate from the forbidden tree. Fun fact, when people picture Satan tricking Eve, Eve, it is usually portrayed as a snake giving her an apple. But the Bible never says it was an apple. It just says it was a fruit. And there was no physical description of the serpent. We just know that it was the most cunning animal God had ever made. Most theologians believe the serpent likely had legs because the Bible says after God cursed him that the serpent was forced to crawl on its belly. Regardless, Adam and Eve's eyes were open to good and evil and they hid from God because of their shame. Because of God's purity and perfect justice, Adam and Eve were banished from the garden and mankind was cursed because of their sin. Their perfect relationship was broken. Things went downhill from there. Because of man's separation from God, his flesh demanded rebellion. Adam and Eve's son committed the first murder against his own brother because of jealousy. Wickedness and immorality spread. It became so devastating that eventually there was only one family considered honorable enough to be saved from God's righteous anger. This was Noah. God had him build an ark and flooded the rest of the earth. Make note as you read that this book, just how many animals Noah brought on the ark, because it might not be what you've always pictured. Noah and his family spent over a year on the ark, 
371 days. And when they finally disembarked, God gave them the rainbow as a sign that he would never flood the earth again. So the earth again was multiplied and the people again became filled with wickedness. God told them to fill the earth and spread out, but instead man got together and attempted to build a tower, the Tower of Babel. This tower was built to elevate their own power and pride, and it was built in defiance to God as if they were saying they did not need him. God could see the evil in their hearts, and he confused their languages, and this is when man finally left the area and settled around the earth. So now we're to the second section. God is going to shift from global events to local ones. This section only covers about 285 years. It begins with God calling Abram, who later becomes Abraham. He makes a covenant with him and makes three promises. Great land, a great nation, and great blessings. Although part of his promise was for many descendants, Abram and his wife had no children and they were quite old, 75 and 65 years old. Abraham has an incredible story. He refuses to trust God over and over again, yet he is later referred to as the father of faith. This is because through his trials and mistakes, he learns who God truly is and trusts him with the most precious thing he had, which is his son Isaac, who God blessed him and his wife with 25 years after his promise for a son. Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob had 12 sons, and through them we get the 12 tribes of Israel. One of those sons, Jacob's favorite, was Joseph. Joseph is another one with an amazing story, one of my favorites. It shows us how God creates us for a divine purpose that is much bigger than we can see. It encourages us to keep integrity and faith despite our circumstances. It displays how suffering can be used for our good and to bring God glory. And it inspires us to be courageous and to persevere despite the fact that Joseph's own brother sold him into slavery the book of Genesis concludes with Joseph rescuing them and bringing them to Egypt to escape a great famine. Interestingly, they will live there for 215 years with much of that time spent in slavery, which is a story we will talk about in our video on Exodus. It is amazing how many things happen in this one book. Here's what's most important. God knew man would sin and he had a plan of redemption from the beginning. He established that plan through Abraham and later reaffirmed it with Isaac and then Jacob. Genesis sets the stage for the ultimate fulfillment of that plan, which would come years later when his son Jesus came to earth to set us free for eternity. Genesis is a book written to explain to the Israelites where they came from and where they were going, but is relative to us today because it shows us how God had a plan for us all along. When you read this book, I hope that you see how incredible God is. His magnificent power over creation, his righteous anger over our sin, his incredible mercy and grace that allows him to love us despite our iniquities. God desires to bless you just like he did Abraham. I hope that the information shared today helps you grasp how interesting the Bible is so you develop a passion for reading it. And I pray that as you dig into scripture and go through your workbook, God speaks to you in exciting new ways and your spirit begins coming to life. God bless.